Welcome to the Idea to Value podcast, where in every episode we highlight the latest insights into creativity and innovation from experts around the world. I'm your host, Nick Skillicorn. I care about the evidence behind what makes ideas happen, and I've already helped thousands of people just like you through my unique insights into recent scientific findings of how creativity works. I also show you how to turbocharge innovation programs so they finally deliver on the value and ideas you've been struggling to execute. Get your free training on how creativity can be improved by registering now at www.ideatovalue.com. Now let's get on with today's episode. Hello, 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 everyone. I'm really happy to have something new with us uh, for the podcast today, and I mean that quite literally. Uh, today, we've got Scott McGregor, the founder and CEO of uh, Something New. Scott, it's wonderful having you with us. Nick, I cannot thank you enough. Great being with you. <laughs> so uh, for people who might not know you or the work that your company does, can you just give us a little insight about what Something New actually does? I mean, from the name, it could be anything. <laughs> so we've got two different pieces of our business. Um, one is a talent acquisition piece, um, more traditionally known as recruiting. Uh, the other is an advisory services piece, but basically they work hand in hand. So we're big believers, in, typically in recruiting, people are just getting people what they need today, which to me is like getting them the fish. Um, but it doesn't necessarily build a strong foundation to have it uh, have repeatable success in the future. So through our advisory services, we're able to help companies build a solid talent acquisition foundation um, so that they can repeat that process. Um, so I started the company uh, four years ago after 20 years of frustration as a sales and marketing leader, um, building teams throughout the, you know, throughout the United States, uh, and really just frustrated with the way that recruiting was traditionally done. Uh, I thought it was a pretty dysfunctional industry. So I initially just set out to solve my own problems, uh, to be honest. And I wrote up a business plan and unfortunately sat on that business plan for 10 years, which is super embarrassing. Uh, but I did not have the guts to jump off the cliff and leave uh, a very good job. But uh I have an incredibly supportive wife and she helped kick my ass off the cliff and, and helped to encourage me to do the things that I needed to do to, to start the business. And it's been, uh, it's been an incredible four years. I mean, that, that's, that's a fantastic story, but um, I mean, recruitment doesn't sound like there's, there's that much to it. What, what was wrong with the previous way of doing things and uh, what is your, what's your approach that uh, has actually innovated the industry? Yeah, I think it's, it started with, I really felt like the people that I was working with, it was their job to think about talent every day and think about better in a way, innovative ways uh, for us to think about talent, yet they really weren't bringing any creativity or any new ideas to the table. They were just throwing CVs at us, um, hoping that something would stick and that they would get paid. So I, I didn't think that was really the way that uh, it should work. I thought they should be the one that would be educating us. Um, I didn't feel like there was a great process. So most of the recruiters that would call uh, and solicit our business, they would do a job search based on a job description and a salary range. And I didn't think that was enough information. Um, they didn't want to really do a lot of heavy lifting. So we wound up with pretty inaccurate uh, candidates being submitted. Um, so that was frustrating. There was no uh, real vetting process that I thought made sense. I thought the fee structures are, the fee structures in recruiting are very antiquated. So they're typically done on a percentage model. Um, and we flipped that kind of on its head. There's a lot of holes to doing it as a percentage um, versus the way that we do it. Uh, so I think those were those were some of the things. And then I wanted to start a company that had a very strong social mission because building a company and doing all the things that you need to do along that journey uh, to get where you want to go, it's a lot more palatable when you know that there's uh, something bigger out there for you and that you're able to give back to a greater extent, the bigger you get financially. So it just, I think it makes uh, not only me, but everybody that works for us get out of bed with a, a little bit of a different mindset. 
I mean, there's, there's so much research now, uh, especially some that uh, we found in Deloitte about purpose-driven organizations and how they really seem to be outperforming companies that don't have a clear purpose that they and their staff are all working towards. And uh, I think yep. we'll, we'll get onto that point in a minute. But um, before we uh, started recording, we were having a chat. And uh, one of the things that I'm really keen to find out about is your company's apparently won some American Business Innovation Awards, uh, which is probably what uh, the audience here is, is really keen to hear about. But what, what is the actual innovation that you've brought to the market? How, how is your uh, company approaching things differently? Yeah, so I, I appreciate that. We, so on Friday in Vegas, uh, we won our fourth straight American Business Award for innovation, uh, which we're very proud of. They call the American Business Awards the Stevies. It's kind of the business equivalent to the Oscars. Um, so we did. Uh, we lost the gold to Salesforce, but I don't think there's a lot of shame in losing to a ten billion dollar company uh, with twenty nine thousand employees. Um, so I think you know the reason why we're winning. Uh, these awards year after year, so every year we've been in business, we've won, um, is just the the innovation around our process. So we have a process called Accurate Search Accelerated Placement, or ASAP for short. So it's a very <laughs> detailed process that we use on the candidate and the client side to make sure that we're never smashing a square peg into a round hole. Um, we've come up with a very sophisticated scorecarding system. So we liked for anybody that's ever seen the movie or read the book Moneyball uh, by Michael Lewis. It's about Billy Bean and what he built with the, the Oakland A's um, and really injecting data-driven decisions into evaluating players rather than the old kind of scout who had a gut feel that somebody was going to work. So we brought that into recruiting so that companies could make better data-driven decisions. Um, and, and, you know, our fee structure, again, is completely different uh, from the way that it's done, uh, really, at least in the United States and probably all over the world. But we do a lot of international business as well. Um, so I know that the fee structures are pretty consistent done on a percentage basis, which has no logic to it. So we brought some innovation um, there. So we're just continuing to push the envelope, um, even in our social mission component. You know, we thought we've, we've created this massive influencer network uh, that we've cultivated, and it's just filled with these amazing people. So we said, how can we leverage, you know, these folks um, so that we can shine a brighter spotlight and raise money for, you know, the organizations that we support. So we put uh, these 52 CEOs, Olympians, pro athletes, New York Times bestsellers, we put them in a book called Standing O, uh, where all the proceeds go to charity. So I think it's just trying to look at problems and solve them in a creative way. Um, you know, so we look at, I think we look at innovation a little bit differently. I see I see a lot of companies, like I get calls all the time from salespeople who want to sell me something. And, and quite honestly, sometimes it takes me a long time. Maybe it's because I'm not that bright, but it takes me a while to figure out what problem they even solve. Um, so I think we're always very focused on innovation, but it has to be tied to real value. So if it doesn't solve a real problem, that to me is not really innovation. Absolutely. I mean, uh, that's one thing from all my analysis of what the definition of innovation should actually be and the work that I do uh, with, with large clients, it always comes down to this concept of executing uh, a new offering that delivers value, but value to both the company that's trying to produce it and the end customer. Because so many companies, right. they, they think they've got this great new solution uh, and therefore by definition, it's, uh, it's an innovation, but they then struggle to find anyone who actually wants it because there's no customers that see the value in it. <laughs> and we, we work primarily in the, in the startup world. Um, so we see that every day where, you know, they're addressing a problem, but I'm not really sure that the market is willing to pay um, for the solution that they're, they're solving. Um, so yeah, I think it's a struggle that a lot of companies go through. 
So let's get back to this concept of your mission-driven company. Uh, the, I, I'd refer to it as a purpose-driven company. What is the, the purpose or the mission that you guys are working towards and how does that affect, that you work, uh, the, affect the work that you do on a day-to-day -day basis? So we have three distinct whys. Um, so I think most people know Simon Sinek, so we're a believer in, in understanding what our whys are. So our first why, which, you know, why do we get out of bed every day? It's, it's really to do three things. Number one is to give back. So we give back through uh, a part of our organization that we call something good. Um, and something good is donations to charities that we support. Uh, it's the book that we've written. Uh, we've got two more coming out, uh, one called Standing O Encore, another one called Standing O Salute, which is going to be purely for the military. Um, so that's one of our core values and really one of, one of our whys. The second one is that we can give candidates a completely different experience. And I know that when you're in the right job, everything is better. So you have better relationships, your finances are better, your mental health is better, your physical health is better, everything's better. Uh, conversely, when you don't have that right job, um, everything suffers. Relationships suffer, your finances suffer, mental health, physical health, et cetera. So I really feel like we have a fiduciary responsibility to all of the candidates that we work with to make sure that we're as transparent as possible and that we're putting them really in the right situation so that they can thrive because it, it, it's life-changing. So we take it very, very seriously. Um, and the third why is really centered around our clients. Because we've chosen to work with smaller organizations where we're working directly typically with the CEO or sometimes the CRO, CMO, et cetera, um, we can really impact the trajectory of those businesses. So it's not to say that we couldn't uh, work with uh, a large company like an Amazon or a Google or Apple, but I, honestly, placing people there uh, really is, we're not gonna see the fruits of our labor, we're not gonna see the needle move as much, uh, and it's just so unbelievably satisfying to see, to put that right person in place and then see that company scale and either go through hyper growth or have a liquidity event. Um, that's just very satisfying. So those are really the three whys of, of you know, why do we get out of bed? It's our social mission to give back. Uh, it's to improve candidates' lives and it's to help clients um, really reach, uh, reach their goals. And how does this actually uh, manifest itself with the other staff in the organization? And I say that because a lot of people are a little bit cynical about these mission statements and companies. Quite often they, they're seen as being something that came out of the leadership team during a strategy away day and they're pasted on the website and they don't actually <laughs> look very much. But uh, is it something that um, other people sort of uh, interpret in their own way when they're doing their work? Does everyone buy into it? How does it actually uh, work in your organization? Everybody buys into it because we talk about it so much. Um, so, you know, right from the beginning, we said this is not going to be a plaque on the wall. This is not a veiled way uh, to make people think we're, we're uh, a bunch of good people. Um, this is really at the core of who we are. So it's something we talk about. It's funny because I've had some people comment um, that we post an awful lot on a, a platform like LinkedIn. We post an awful lot about our social mission um, because I really feel like if you don't try to inspire other companies to do the same, um, you're never going to have that ripple effect that you can have. So it's funny because some people have said you post more about something good than you do about something new and our services uh, that we get paid for. Um, so it's just, you know, it's whether you live it and breathe it uh, every day or whether it's just something that you made up uh, to sound good. So uh, for us, it's not a plaque on the wall. It's something we live and breathe every single day. And we, we incorporate it into so many different disciplines in our business um, that I, I think it's just, it's 
infused within the company. It's not, uh, it's not something that we revisit every once in a while. It's something that we talk about uh, as a team all the time. Scott, and then finally, uh, one thing I want to come back to is this idea of your own journey, uh, your own um, process of innovation. And right at the beginning, you mentioned that you had this great idea, uh, something, an idea that would turn into what's now a very successful business, but you sat on it for about 10 years. So I just wanted to <laughs> ask you, um, <laughs> what, what was preventing you getting started with the idea? And then once you actually got started, was it all plain sailing or were there any situations where uh, you, you faced some challenges that some other innovators could learn from? So I sat on it um, because I was terrified, to be honest. Uh, so I grew up uh, super poor in a very affluent town, which is a really weird way to grow up. So I was surrounded by, you know, uh, friends that were, you know, going on pretty exotic vacations and, you know, uh, Mercedes and BMWs and stuff like that. And, you know, we would go to McDonald's once a year. So when I was successful in business uh, and was making a lot of money, I just couldn't fathom walking away from that uh, and taking such a risk. I'm a pretty conservative person by nature, um, but I'm also very competitive. So I have a competitive athletic background and I'm just competitive in, in general. Um, you know, so that was really it. I was, I mean, I'd love to say it was something different, but I was terrified. Um, I, I just, that stability to leave that all behind was, was very difficult. Um, but the journey has been a lot of, a lot of fun. Um, you take a lot of crazy circuitous path to get to success, but I think, uh, we're getting there. Um, it's never a finished product. I mean, we're only four years in. One of the things we talk about as a team all the time is that uh, while it's great to get a lot of accolades and a lot of pats on the back, and we've got hundreds of clients now all over the world, um, we know that every couple months we're going to look back and we're going to say, oh my God, I can't, I can't believe that, you know, we were doing this or weren't doing that, um, or how did we survive without this or that? Um, so there's, there's always, you know, a lot of rocks in the road, uh, along the way, but, you know, we've been able to overcome those. And, uh, I, I think it's just keeping, uh, keeping your eyes on the fact that you're investing for the future and having a, a long-term goal. So we, you know, we're very, uh, very much a company that plays the long game. Uh, we're, we're not looking for kind of short-term success because I think that's where you cut corners. Um, so we're always looking for things that are going to pay off. Um, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not even next year, but down the road at some point, those just seem like smart investments to make. Um, but we've certainly, you know, we've had our challenges, uh, We've come up with creative, innovative ideas that have been wildly successful to the point that they would almost swamp the ship. Uh, so we've had to pump the brakes and slow down a little bit um, because uh, we could have become the victim of our own success. Uh, you know, I'm a big believer that great business is about execution. It's not just coming up with... Uh, innovative, creative ideas. If you can't execute on them, they don't really mean anything. Um, so we, we've had certainly some of those challenges along the way where things have been uh, maybe uh, almost too successful. That sounds strange, but, um, and we've had to kind of pump the brakes and slow down a bit. Scott, it's been wonderful speaking with you today. If people want to find out more about yourself and about something new, what's the best way they can find out about that? Um, go to our website. Uh, it's try something new now.com. So I know it's long, uh, but try something new now.com. Uh, and people can find me on LinkedIn. Um, so we're, we utilize the LinkedIn platform. Uh, you could certainly find us on Instagram and Twitter uh, and Facebook, but uh, LinkedIn is definitely the place to go. Uh, so I really, really appreciate your time, Nick. It's, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, it's been a lot of fun for me as well. Yeah, thanks for coming on. And yeah, I look forward to speaking again with you soon. Sounds good. Thanks, Nick. 
Thank you so much for listening. If you liked it, please like, share and subscribe and leave me a comment about what you thought and what you'd like to see more about. If you want to take your creativity and innovation capabilities to the next level, then invest in yourself with the premium training only available at ideatovalue.com. These exclusive training modules have all been put together by me, Nick Skillicorn, and have been used by thousands of artists, innovation leaders, and CEOs to become better at understanding the source of their creativity and executing on their innovation ambitions. And there is no risk to new, as they are backed by our money-back guarantee. Now, don't forget to go out there and make your ideas a reality. See you again soon.